This here is the S22 Ultra from Samsung. And yes, it's almost exactly like the Note from 2020. And we're all tired of all those tropes about how this should have been called the Note 22 and not the S22 Ultra. Basically, it's fixing things that the S21 Ultra lacked and combining it with the Note 20's design language. But what's most important is that this phone has almost no compromises. It is nearly perfect, except for one or two small nickels that are probably fixable with software updates. So if you're in the market for an Android flagship, watch this video till the end to know why this is the phone you should buy. A huge thanks to Smarttel and Dwarka Delhi for providing me early access to the S22 series phones. This is a well-known Samsung Smart Cafe in Dwarka and a really good place to make your Samsung phone purchase if you're located in the NCR region. Contact details on screen and in the description. The highlights this year are Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip instead of Exynos for India. Same big 5000 mAh battery like the S21 Ultra with space for a built-in S Pen. Much improved night photography. A 6.8 inch screen with 1750 nits max brightness. 45 watt charging support. Now this is a big and chunky phone, make no mistakes about that. It's lighter than the iPhone 13 Pro Max, but the dimensions, especially the length, are huge. Because of the curved screen, it is not as wide, so slightly easier to grip. But I can see how this will change when a case is put on. Basically be prepared to handle one of the largest phones around if you get the Ultra. The in-hand feel is great and premium. In fact, the regular S22 feels like it should not carry the same name once you've handled the Ultra. The premiumness offered by the Ultra is on another level. A shout out to this special color, the burgundy, that would normally not be my first choice, but having experienced it, I can easily say that it is one of the best S22 Ultra colors. The sides look fantastic in this finish, and the overall design really stands out. Fortunately, this appears to be the hero color in a lot of regions, so do check it out in person if you have any doubts. The cameras don't have a module sitting on top of the lenses unlike last year, and in my book this is a great advantage. Not only does this look very unique and clean, but also, perhaps more importantly, it balances the phone better. Last year's Ultra was top heavy and would always tend to tip over towards the top if you used it without a case. Keeping dust out from between the lenses is another matter, and yes, it will tend to collect in that area more because of the recesses. The great thing about this phone when compared to its predecessor is that it has a built-in slot for the upgraded S Pen. With just 2.8 ms of latency, it is 3 times more responsive than the old S Pen, as well as the Apple Pencil 2nd generation. So you don't actually have to buy a case just to store your S Pen, and yet you're not compromising on the battery capacity of the phone. Even taking the S Pen out of its slot is a satisfying experience. There is a nice click when you press in on the S Pen, and it gives you just enough space to grip it with your fingernail and pull it out for use. Now this is the first time that a Samsung flagship phone has launched in India with a Snapdragon processor. It is the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Sure, we had the Snapdragon 888 S21 Ultra selling in the country last year later on, but that was not its launch SoC. This is important for a number of reasons. In January this year, we got the disappointing S21 FE, which had an Exynos processor and terrible performance. It overheated and the battery life was terrible. There is no way to sugarcoat this. Well, fortunately, there is good news all around this time. The 4nm Snapdragon chip is more efficient, and even though it may not be the best in terms of its own thermal performance, the cooling solution that Samsung has used, combined with the glass back of the S22 Ultra, and when combined with its gargantuan size, works really well. Even though I noted that it does heat up when doing intensive tasks, it is a lot less noticeable on this phone than it is on any other Samsung S model. Perhaps it is because it is so huge that you tend not to touch it in the areas where it is the hottest. Whilst downloading Genshin Impact, the difference in temperature between the top and bottom of the phone was almost 8 degrees. And yet, the S21 FE with its temperature difference of 6 degrees felt much more uncomfortable to me. So overall, thermally this phone does really well and is not a matter of concern at all. To me, the most important yardstick to measure this is that the phone should not get uncomfortable to use when using it without a case and doing everyday tasks. That may be browsing social media or the internet, texting 
texting and emailing those kinds of tasks that every smartphone user does these days and you should be able to enjoy the lightweight design of your phone without adding a bulky case to it the s22 ultra succeeds in doing that and thus it passes my test of thermal performance as expected the performance is nothing short of exemplary everything is buttery smooth there are no lags to speak of and combined with the adaptive 120 hertz refresh rate watching movies browsing the internet or scrolling through your social media feed is an extremely satisfying experience on this device in india it only starts with 12 gb of ram which is just as well because as you can see in these images a lot of that ram gets used by the phone doing just everyday tasks that is not to say that an 8 gb ram model is insufficient but as usual android seems to be able to make use of that added ram so if you want to do any form of meaningful multitasking without worrying about running out of memory it is a nice advantage to get the extra memory along with the storage upgrade the phone also shows that 2 gb of the available ram is reserved so do factor in that as well so i faced none of the issues that i faced with the s21 fe in terms of performance and the phone is pretty much flawless in this respect if you live in a region that has the snapdragon 8 gen 1 processor inside the s22 ultra then consider yourself lucky and consider this as one of the major selling points of the smartphone samsung is now offering industry leading four years of software updates for the s series phones along with an extra year of security updates one UI is nice, customizable, smooth and without any major issues. Unfortunately, just like the S21 FE, I did face the network connection error every time I let the phone sleep for a while. This was the same on the S22 as well, as well as the S22 Ultra. What causes this is beyond me, but apart from this, I can safely say that if you for some reason do not want to be in the Apple camp, then this is the best interpretation of Android at the moment. As usual, things are infinitely customizable, and nowadays, most apps have parity in terms of how they perform on iOS versus Android. I must give a special shout out to the ultrasonic fingerprint reader this time, because it feels especially fast and reliable on this phone. In fact, I've never had such a good fingerprint reader on any Samsung device from the past. And I didn't think that I would be saying this because even the optical fingerprint reader on the lesser S phones such as the fan edition phones are nothing to be scoffed at. But this is truly in a different league. It is reliable and almost works 100% every time. I almost never had a failed recognition of a fingerprint. I think the biggest achievement that Samsung has made in terms of software is keeping things simple, neat and clean. They're also not forcing you anymore to use Bixby everywhere and so the hardware button or the power button can be customized to the Google Assistant or any other app that you choose. I have to mention that sometimes I found the adaptive brightness of the screen to be a bit iffy. It was not bright enough in some situations and a bit too bright in others. That is why manually selecting 50% brightness proved a lot more reliable for me in those situations. If you do choose manual brightness, the 1750 nits of screen brightness that you can achieve makes this phone easily readable even in direct sunlight. If you compare it directly to the iPhone under these circumstances, then you can tell the difference. It is extremely clear legible and bright. In fact, when compared directly to the iPhone, it makes the iPhone screen colors seem washed out in comparison. However, obviously for the battery life, it is best to leave the adaptive brightness on and I have seen that sometimes toggling it on and off brings it to the right brightness level. Once you pull the S Pen out of its slot, there is a guide that pops up to help you with the advanced features and to guide you with what all you can do with the S Pen. Writing with the S Pen is quite an intuitive and pleasant affair. Because the tip of the S Pen is soft, it offers a more natural feeling experience than even the Apple Pencil when writing. It is closer to writing on actual paper than the Apple Pencil. How much you use the S Pen will depend on individual tastes and preferences but if you wanted to or have been using the S Pen, then not only is this currently the only viable choice, but it is convincingly the best. I found new users for it. In certain apps where I needed a bit more precision when selecting small amounts of data, it made things a lot easier. I find it also especially useful as a remote for clicking selfies and pictures. You can also pause and play videos with it, as well as increase and decrease the volume. Basically, it elevates the experience of using the phone to something very unique and, in many cases, truly useful. Straight off the bat, cameras are a big improvement this time. Photos under all conditions are fantastic, reliable and punchy. 
Samsung has put a lot of emphasis on what it calls nightography, and night photography is certainly improved. Take a look at this image for example, which was clicked in near darkness, and not only is it very usable, but the picture does not lose any of the finer details. The sensor is essentially the same as the S21 Ultra, but the differences lie in the computational photography. What this means is that all lenses perform well in direct sunlight, with images being useful all the way up to 30x zoom level. 100x remains more of a gimmicky feature for now. Unfortunately, my less than perfect experience with video that I had with the S21 Ultra is kind of repeated with this phone but in a different way. Last year, I found that the S21 Ultra had less than perfect stabilization when walking. That surprised me because the iPhone of the time, the iPhone 12 Pro Max was really really smooth with video and the stabilization was excellent. This time there is a constant jitter when you're recording a video and I was hoping that it would not translate into the final video but clearly as you can see here, it is kind of skipping frames. Also, the crop seems to be brutal when you do 1x on this in 4K 60fps mode. By default, the camera starts out in 0.66x mode. I did try the same exercise with the regular S22 and it had none of the jitter that the S22 Ultra had. So unfortunately, this was a very very disappointing experience for me in terms of the video stabilization and recording capabilities of the S22 Ultra. It is one blemish in an otherwise near perfect record in terms of the cameras of the S22 Ultra. But once again, it is what it is. It may get fixed with a software update, but that is how things stand right now. And I'm just letting you know so you can make an informed decision. An area that the phone really surprised me in was the battery life. And I'm sure that this is all thanks to that Snapdragon processor inside. Going by the numbers that I got in my short few days with this phone, I could have achieved almost 8 hours of screen on time. That is fantastic for a Samsung phone and double of what the S21 FE used to give me. Now, even if in the real world you're away from Wi-Fi and you're using two SIM cards, which I did as well, it should mean that it is very easily possible to get around 7 hours of screen on time from this phone, which essentially means that it will last all day easily. That is all I want in terms of battery life and this phone happily achieves that. So great result in terms of the battery life. I tested it both with a SIM card as well as without a SIM card inside and happily there is not much of a battery hit when connected to cellular networks as compared to just being used as a smart device on Wi-Fi. So the 4nm chip inside is definitely a lot more efficient than any Exynos chips that have come out in the past or even the current one if reports are to be believed. In fact, I will link to an article by XDA developers in the description below, where they compare the two variants of the S22 Ultra. Unfortunately, there are no surprises there and the Snapdragon variant easily outperforms the Exynos variant. Unfortunately, that's the variant that is still being sold in Europe, so it's still a case of being shortchanged if you're located in that region. But it's great to see that India has received the processor that it deserved for a long time. As a result, what would have been one of the biggest shortcomings of the smartphone is now its biggest asset. Also on this note, I found that even with 45 watt charging support, the charging speed of the phone is average. It's not especially quick. I mainly used a 30 watt charger to charge this and it took its own sweet time to charge, just over an hour to charge fully. A number of tests have also demonstrated that going from a 25 watt to 45 watt charger makes only a marginal difference and may not be worth the cost of getting a new charger just to charge a bit quicker. So I'm just pointing out once again the small problems that I've had with this phone. Just so you're aware of what they are and also happily and thankfully these are things that can get fixed with software updates. So currently as things stand the biggest issue is the jitter when recording 4k 60fps video. The second issue is the network connection error that it keeps springing at me. And finally, the adaptive brightness in certain situations is not as intelligent as I would like it to be. Now, none of these should be a deal breaker for you. And if they're not, then there's really little else to complain about this phone. The pre-bookings for the S22 Ultra have crossed the 100,000 mark in India in a very short period of time. In fact, it breached 70,000 bookings in less than two hours apparently of going live in India. This shows how well aware consumers in this segment in this country are. They always wanted cutting edge technology with their flagship Android phone and they have thankfully and deservedly received that this time. This is a phone with almost no compromise. It offers everything that's great about Android and packages it in stunning, stunning form. 
it manages to offer a built-in slot for an S-Pen without compromising on battery life or battery capacity. It offers the best in terms of cameras and I'm sure that with a few more updates on that front, that experience will also be sublime. Really, it's very, very simple in this case. This here is currently the best Android phone in the market and in the eyes of many for whom iPhones just do not make any sense, it may just be the best phone in the world. Thanks for watching and do check out my review of the regular S22 which is coming out next. If you found this content useful, please consider subscribing to the channel. I will see you in the next one.